ever been going about a normal day when all of a sudden, out of the blue, you just get this uneasy feeling? A lot of times we refer to it as a prick. Sometimes we'll call it a check, but we would all agree it's an overwhelming sense of uncomfortableness. And as Christians, we've come to realize that it's a feeling we should never override. I'll never forget something that happened to me when I was about seven or eight years old. I got off the school bus one day and started walking up the hill toward our house when all of a sudden I felt extremely cautious and I didn't know why. I just felt this need to walk very, very slowly. As I came up the driveway, a few more yards, I saw something in the grass and as I inched my way closer, I realized it was a snake. My dad wasn't home from work yet, so I went running back to my grandparents' house and Grandpa Blythe came up the driveway with me and discovered that not only was it a snake, it was a copperhead. And that probably seems like no big deal, but that episode that day made an impression on me for life. I believe with everything within me that it was the Lord that pricked me that day and helped me to avoid what could have been a disaster. We know a prick is God-given. Some people will call it an intuition. Some people will say it's our instincts. And whatever label you want to put on it, we know it's something that happens deep down inside that keeps us from danger, naturally and spiritually. When we think about God pricking our hearts, it reminds me of Acts chapter 9, where Saul was on the road to Damascus. He was getting close to the city when the Bible says a light from heaven shone all around him. And he fell to the ground and heard the audible voice of God asking him why he was persecuting him. And in Acts chapter 9, verse 5, Paul begins to speak. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Verse 6, And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. We all know that for three days Saul was blind, but as he prayed and he sought God, the Lord restored his sight and turned his whole life around. And when he fell to the ground that day on the road to Damascus, the Lord said, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Now for many years, just until recently, I would read the word pricks in this story and not think a whole lot about it. But when you look into the original meaning of this word pricks, it's referring to the prick of an ox goad. You can look up pictures online and see how an old fashioned ox goad is a long pole that has a sharp point on the end, similar to a spearhead. And it's used to keep livestock in line. So essentially the Lord was referring to Saul as a disobedient animal who was kicking against the prodding of God. And notice how God didn't say it's hard on me for you to kick against the pricks. The Lord was looking that day down on Saul in pity. He said, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. He knew Saul's life had become absolutely miserable as he kept resisting the prodding of God. If there's ever been a time that we need to stay sensitive, that we need to be attentive to the Lord, I believe you'll agree with me that it's now. Sometimes he's dealing with us personally about something between us and him. Other times we're put under pressure from a friend or a coworker, or sometimes unfortunately, it's even someone that we have confidence in that's trying to persuade us to do something that we don't feel right about. My dad was in an uncomfortable situation like this on his job many years ago when his boss came to him and asked him to do something that dad didn't feel right about. The boss came back around a while later and he asked my dad why he wasn't going along with what he had been asked to do. And dad explained that this went against his convictions. And the boss just shrugged and said, oh, David, just 
do it a few times and you won't feel bad about it anymore. And of course, dad knew that he could not do that. And thankfully, the boss ended up highly respecting dad, even rewarding him with special privileges, all because dad didn't override that prick in his heart. And he stood firm for what he believed. Now, sometimes we don't even know how to fully explain why we feel bad about something. That wasn't the case with my dad. He knew the reason that his heart was being pricked was it went against his conscience. It went against his convictions. But sometimes all we can tell the other person is something just doesn't feel right about this. And not long ago, I heard my mom giving some advice to someone who was standing in these similar shoes. And mom told this person, when you don't feel right about something as a Christian, you don't really even have to know the full reason why. When God gives us that uneasy feeling, when we feel a prick, that should be enough. We should never try to make ourselves feel okay about something that doesn't feel right. We've quoted the scripture many times in 1 John 3 and 20. If our heart condemns us, or if our heart pricks us, God's greater than our heart. And we can't cave into the pressure around us by entertaining the logic, everyone's doing it, so it must be okay. When we develop that kind of mindset, we will get into all kinds of trouble in so many ways. We've got to seek the Lord for ourselves, no matter who's doing what around us. We've got to look at what Paul told us in Philippians 2 and 12, where he said, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. Can I ask you a personal question today? What kind of prick have you felt from God lately? What has the Lord been dealing with you about? If he's warning you about something, please don't push that off. If someone is pressuring you into doing something that you don't feel right about that, please don't override it. If you ignore it and you go on, just like the boss told my dad, it's a fact. After a while, you won't feel bad about it anymore. But that's a dangerous place to be. It is scary to become numb to the prodding of God. And we can step into those shoes where we become numb to what He's trying to warn us about. We all agree we're living in a day with so many seducing spirits that's running rampant in our world. And if we'll stay sensitive to Him, we'll feel extra pricks and nudges between here and heaven. And when we feel that prick, Lord, help us to stop, even if we don't understand what's going on. Help us to stop as Saul did and say, Lord, what will you have me to do? And when we pray that kind of prayer, the Lord promised to show us what we need to do. We all know that Saul was never the same after that day. His name was changed to Paul, and we see a man who quit kicking against the pricks, but he totally submitted his life to the Lord. And if we'll do that, when we come to the end of our journey, we can say as Paul, I'm ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I have finished my course with joy. And we know we can say that on that day because we stayed sensitive to the leading of God.